and welcome to this episode of Budget Builder on Sorare TV. And I've got to say thank you to everyone who participated on the Twitter poll that we had earlier today to decide what the theme, what the build would be for the video. And I've got to say, I had a lot of fun. I've been actually waiting for... It's like I always keep remembering and then forgetting and then re-remembering that I re-forgot uh, about all the amazing tools on Sorare Data to do with the watch list. So I've actually got two built-in watch lists actually made up for the video today. I hope you enjoy it. We'll be going through building rare and limited Challenger Euro decks with one ETH for each respectively. For the limiteds, what I've went for is like a real, you know, smash and grab, a real strong first five with a lot of buffer around it in terms of like uh, safeguards and insurance policies, that kind of thing. And for the rares, I'm actually going quite left field and I'm thinking about if it was really me and I was having to take some kind of longer shots on some things paying off to get myself into the situation of having a credible all-star rare team come August. As ever, guys, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. I hope you enjoy this one. Do not forget to like, subscribe and share and retweet and all that good stuff. Stay out of trouble and let's get stuck into it. Now, to start with goalkeepers, okay, what I'm trying to think about is any sort of sneaky opportunity to get a goalkeeper cheap, right? And the one angle I thought I would try and explore today that I haven't done in a while and I don't think anyone has in recent times is guys that are maybe thought to have been replaced, but maybe they won't be replaced in actual fact. And the first one is uh, the boy here, Vedic Karagas. Now, Adama obviously had Muric on loan last year. It doesn't sound like he'll be going back there. And they've signed Ertak Ozbier from Yeni Matalanaspor. It's my best chance at it, sorry. And the way it's priced, people obviously believe that Ozbier here, who is like a seasoned Turkish Super League number one goalkeeper, is here to replace Karakis and Muric almost. But having a look at it, I don't think it's as nailed on, is it? And when you see how low the auctions are for Karakis, he's coming in at 0.15 or so. And he has played the cup previously for a damage sport. I don't know anything more than what I'm telling you in the video today. But when I look at Osby, he's been a goalkeeper on a really poor team that can see lots of goals. And yeah, his scores can be good. He's obviously got some underlying goalkeeper statistics that go in his favour. But I think his price is too high for how safe his position is is or isn't. If that's a little bit too risky for you, the other one I'm looking at here is Peter Lewinbrough. Now, Peter Lewinbrough was the number one goalkeeper for Groningen last year. Admittedly, he didn't have one of their better seasons. Groningen are known in the Dutch league as being one of these teams that can be the stepping stone for some other players to come into Europe and do pretty well. Peter Lewin is not one of those people that I'm thinking about who's going to go and have a stellar career or whatever, but they did bring him in. Like He's a former Ajax Academy player. He played in South Africa as well for a few years. And Michael Verip's coming in on loan from Citadard, whose number one is Yannick Van Osh, who currently trades in out for around an ETH by himself. It does feel Verips has started a friendly already. So the first friendly of pre-season, Verips has started. They got 90 minutes. And I think that's what the pricing has done here off the back of that initial friendly. So... Again, with friendlies, you can start to get an insight into what's going on. But for me, it feels like Leuvenbrot is the number one. And this guy is just there to really push the boat and keep him on his toes. But they do have another couple of U23 guys flying around here. And for the prices that they go for, if you want to take a gamble on who's going to be the Groningen goalkeeper, you just need to look at Van Osh at Citadard. Being a guaranteed goalkeeper in the Eredivisie who can score okay, you can make some saves and whatever, it can be a very valuable card. Now in defence, I've tried to give the team a few different options, right? I'm going with Mark McKenzie at 0.1 on last auction, okay? For the simple fact that... I don't see him sitting around on the Ghent bench for another the Ghent bench for another season. If he gets any sniff that he's not guaranteed minutes with the World Cup coming up and with like Miles Robinson injured and there is a lot of question marks for America at centre back, he will be feeling that his chance is slipping through his fingers. I find it easy to imagine that he pushes for some sort of transfer as the window progresses if he's not in line for minutes. But if he isn't lined for minutes, then fantastic. 0.1 being a starting defender for Genk is going to be way undervalued when you look at the prices of guys like Lucimi and Cuesta and Arteaga and whatever, when they've been hot on form. Mark McKenzie's got the minerals to do that as well. And 0.1, I think that's a pretty 
you know, for lack of a better term, safe bet on some cheap utility. Now, I only know about Ahmed Touba because he had some, like, really wishy-washy links to Celtic. He's a left-sided centre-back. He's just transferred to Istanbul Basa Shakir from RKC Walwick in Holland. And as you know, Walwick are not an amazing team. They're definitely not a strong defensive team, it must be said. And, you know, Basa Shakir are one of the best teams in Turkey. And this guy reads really well on all the underlying data. He's actually quite well-renowned through some of the statistic pages and stuff like that on Twitter. And again, he's not really too dissimilar in price to Mark McKenzie at 0 0.174 on the floor, 0 0.15 on last auction. I think he's quite likely to get a starting spot at Istanbul Basa Shakir. And, you know, with the sort of underlying numbers this guy has, he could become very quickly, very quietly, a really useful centre-back. And then the last of my left field defensive trio, if you like, is Bolly Bolingoli. It sounds like today he's going to be signing for Reading. And, you know, like at 0 0.02 last auction, he's probably not going to get another auction. The floor price is 0 0.08. If he does break into the Reading team, and like Bolingoli also played for Istanbul Basa Shakir, the team we just had on screen a minute ago, in the Champions League on loan from Celtic after the fallout. He was highly rated on all these stat pages and all these scouting portals and whatever before we signed him. And he's the guy that really just needs a fresh start because he just really killed his career at Celtic with all of his antics. So if he did get a fresh start and take it, he's definitely got you know the raw materials to, to take that opportunity. And a championship player paying off a defender, an attacking left back at 0 0.08 at the moment could be a good left field option. Now for the midfield, what I'm going to what I'm thinking is is there a team that might be kind of overlooked, I don't want to say slept on, but just overlooked, okay, now Standard Liège have brought in Ronnie Dyla from New York City, I know Ronnie Dyla pretty well after him being Celtic manager for a bunch of seasons, as well as New York City, two teams I follow very closely, and obviously we'll need to watch their transfer policy and what they get up to, but Matteo Cafaro here, the guy who takes all the set pieces for Standard Liège, feels like, on profile at least anyway, a really good Ronnie Dyla number 10 type guy, and if he does play for Ronnie Dyla, 0.35 for a challenger mid in one of the better teams in Belgium that did underperform massively last year and you know I don't expect Dyla to hit the ground running and they're like beating teams 4-0 every week or whatever but I do expect him to get better and the guy that delivers all the dead balls and is the main creator the main, the main set piece taker at 0.35 pending any future transfer activity could be an absolute steal. And alongside him, like, I do think that this team does have some good Ronnie Dyla midfielders in Mervo Bacadi, who I used to have. I had him as a reward uh, when he was playing midfield and he was doing really well. Played a bit of centre-back, it's kind of killed him a little bit. 0 0.04, 0 0.05 or so. I think he's a good kind of accessory next to Cafaro if both these guys are to stay, along with Nicola Raskin, who is 0 0.16 or 0 0.2. He's a very good... You know, under 23 midfielder as well, but I can see Ronnie Dyla taking a guy like Nicholas Raskin and giving him like all the minutes, playing him all the time, putting him on the pitch and putting him on the ball, which is what some of these guys are needing to really progress and kick on with their abilities. So between these three guys, Raskin, Cafaro and Bocadi, I think you can build a really strong challenger Euro midfield that is on underperforming, does have a new manager coming in that could uh, give them an increase, uh, an improvement in results. And to be able to build some options like that from midfield in these price ranges is pretty good bang for buck in my book. Now, I have added Thierry Ambrose into this list as well because I do feel that he is great value for money for a guy that's probably, in my book, going to get around 10 goals this season and can quite easily get around, you know, five to eight assists over the season. I just think he's really... You, you know, the, the, the thing that keeps me excited about guys like this is when you see, like, Vakun Bayo come into Charleroi and then make a name for himself really quickly and get a great move into the championship. You know, profiles like that in the Belgian league, I find it really easy to get excited about in, in track. Jordan Larson is a free agent, and in my book, he is going to do everything in his power to make sure he is a number one starting striker next year. It feels like Challenger Euro is probably going to be his most likely destination. I don't hear millions of teams coming out of the woodwork getting linked with this guy. And I do feel with the short-term loan that he took to Sweden, his priority is minutes, his priority is action, is being on the pitch, and I think that will come into all of his decision-making for where his future may lie, and I think the most likely 
geography of that will be Challenger Europe. But probably my main pick for this team would actually be Mats Kohlert. He's just recently signed for Heerenveen from Willem II. The former, and he's got an extensive youth pedigree, a uh, German under-21 international Hamburg youth prospect. He comes in there now at 0.16, and if you actually look, his main problem he has played a lot of fullback over the last season and it has absolutely killed his score. He's had a lot of sub appearances as well. And I don't know what the script is with Willem too, but they were horrible and just played this guy way out of position. Now bearing in mind this is for Willem too, who are a very low ranking team in the Eredivisie. This isn't too bad, but this is all the kind of non-defender <laughs> scores that the guys had. And then if we leave it with just the kind of mainly attacking ones, these are the scores the guy gets. Now, this is really solid base averages for a forward. Really good AA game to this guy. And these are in the forward positions as a forward card. I can't say that enough. He just does not have enough decisives to make him a real premium card. At the age of 24, he will be overlooked because he's not U23. But at here in Veen, if he is going to play in his natural position... At 0.16, I think that is an absolute steal. So this is the watch list in its entirety. The age range is, we've got two between 19 and 23 and nine players between 24 and 28. Absolutely love all these tools here. In terms of the pricing, the full thing for rares does come in at one and a half ETH in total, but for the build, I wouldn't be recommending every single one of them. Larson and Ambrose in particular both count for 0 0.6, 0 0.65. And they were just kind of like footnotes to this. So even if you removed one of them or even both of them, the teams, and I've, again, I've got both goalkeepers here as well, Peter Van Leeuwen and Cole, uh, uh, Caracas even. And if you're to trim it down to just one goalkeeper and then remove Larson because he's just really like, let's see where he goes kind of idea, you're left with nine cards. Three midfielders, two strikers, and two defenders. So a decent little build, and that could be, that you know, that will compete in all-star rare. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of guys that are in a good age range as well, as we can see with the main chart up here, mainly between the age of 24 and 28. So guys coming into the peak of their career, and they should all be, you know, as long as they pay off. This is a left field build. Could be great bang for buck for sure. Now for limiteds, what I thought is, I wonder who is like one of these teams that has a really good defence that maybe most people don't give them enough credit for. And I know there's a lot of transfer activity going on there now, but when we look at Feyenoord, Justin Bijlo, one of the best goalkeepers in the region, he's not cheap either. And there is some transfer, you know, possibilities around the guy with this kind of profile. His backup, Marciano, is super cheap. So, you know, picking up the, both of them. And even Devin Remy, a rookie, and then this other guy, Jansen, you know, they're all cheap as chips. You could really sweep them all up if you were so motivated. But him, alongside then, and I know we've got some transfers, say, Sinise is probably going to leave. Malasia, or Malasia, whatever you call him, he's away to Man United. But... We can build a team with Bijlo, one other goalkeeper, say Marciano, Gertrida, Trauner, Pedersen here, and Philip Sandler. Now, Philip Sandler is ex-Man City as well, and he's super cheap. So between these four guys and the goalkeeper and the backup goalkeeper, we can pick up six cards and have what was one of the best defences in the Eredivisie next season as our like foundations, our defence for all-star limited and even the way some of the scoring can go because the way we're going to build this team we're not going to be too heavy in one club this could be a specialist it could be an underdog there could be a lot of different options that we play about with with us now it's been very widely reported uh, there's been a lot of outgoing transfers from portugal but it feels like you know the midfield of sport in lisbon is very much kind of overlooked at the moment especially when it comes to limiteds pote or pote or pedro goncalves is normally one of the most dominant midfielders in challenger his limited at the moment is a fantastic price and you can furnish him around. Uh, unfortunately, Marita, the new signing from like, Santa Clara or something like that, doesn't have a limited card yet. So you can keep your eyes peeled for the new season and wait for him to get one. But you can surround Pedro Goncalves with Daniel Asugo, who's a highly rated rookie. Same with Daniel Baraka. I don't think he has a rookie, but he's highly rated. And Matias Nunes, who is very highly rated. And... We can then get the core of a midfield that will be, a, like Feyenoord, a top three team in their domestic competition in European football with guys that have got proven scores of being in amongst the best in the region. And then for my two strikers, I've went with Maeda and Kyogo. I can't not. A combined cost of 0.18 for what I think is going to be a frightening pair of forward cards in SO5 this coming season. And when we build this full team out, we end up with 11 players all in or so, give or take. Four of them between the age of 19 and 23. Five of them 
between the age of 24 and 28. So a great pool of players, a lovely cross-section of positions as well. Now, price-wise, this does not include the handcuff of Marciano or any goalkeeper for Feyenoord, but we're getting quite comfortably under that E threshold. And what we're, what we're left with is a fantastic goalkeeper-defender combo situation option. The ability to play somebody like Pedro Cancalves or in his absence maybe one of his deputies or something like that, and then double striker with Maeda and Furuhashi. And with some of these other pieces like Pedersen, Sandler, Barranca, Usugo, the upside, Gertrida, the upside on some of these guys actually paying off if they were to pay off in the absence of like a trauner, if you got injured or suspended or transferred or whatever, then means we've got some good ammo for trading in the future as well as some core pieces to be playing SO5 with. So from the build, we could end up with a rare team that would look something like this. Unfortunately, we don't have any historic data that really lends itself to letting us know exactly how well this team would do historically. But with the averages they all present, they're very all close to a 50 average or so, give or take. So grabbing Ethereum thresholds from the All-Star Rare division is very feasible. And the guys, especially Cafaro and Colair, do have upside in them. Ahmed Tuba also as well could be a guy with clean sheet bonuses and whatever on AA could break 60. And it is a, for me, this is actually quite an exciting, cheap alternative kind of left field option for getting into all-star rare with the goalkeeper, the way he's been so cheaply priced, as well as some of the changing situations with all these outfield cards. Colair actually playing in this position, Tuba transferring to a top team in a division, and then the two midfield guys getting a new manager who actually really promotes these types of midfielders in his tactics. And then for Unlimited, this is the team we would end up with, the actual main team itself. And I've got to admit, guys, this looks like a destructively sexy team for SO5, solid goalkeeper defender pair, solid strike partnership, and then a midfielder in the middle that for his price is a quarter almost of a Vanekin. They've not played too often together, but as you can see, this team could win the division no problem at all. This score back here would have got 442 points and it would have won the division, got a tier zero limited card in Global All-Star. All these guys as well do qualify for Challenger, so we could have played them there. And even if we were to say that Bijlo and Trauner won't repeat those scores, I think the front three you could say quite easily will repeat their scores with Kyogo Furuhashi there having a captain bonus in this example. If you took 20 points off Bijlo and dropped him at 52 and took 20 points off a Troutner and put him down at 80, this team would still finish on 400 points and would have still got a star rare. Limited. I beg your pardon. And then the times where you maybe you do need to rotate some of these guys out because they're suspended or they're injured or you've got good foresight on the manager's selection choices, this could definitely be hunting for tier 3, 2s and 1s, no problem at all across the majority of the season. And depending on how deep you handcuff the goalkeeper, maybe maybe one of the younger guys like Remy or something like that, maybe they go out and get a loan and then all of a sudden you have a second ability to play another team. And with these other pieces that we've got, we would need another forward to be quite honest with you, but the other defenders we've got from Feyenoord, the other midfielders we have from Sport and Lisbon could easily buff out a secondary team we could just toss out somewhere else and, and cross our fingers it was to pay off. And with the amount of U23 options we already have scattered around this build, it's a very versatile build. I had a lot of fun on this episode, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and retweet tweeting, all that good stuff. Stay out of trouble and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.